Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's session, which is looking at the new Pearson Level 3 National and Uniform Protective Services, um, with a particular focus on the Unit 1 Pearson set theme and how to incorporate that. If we make a start looking at the aims, uh, we are going to have a look at the structure and the content and assessment just briefly. We will look at how you can plan your curriculum delivery. There will be a little bit of a discussion from myself about um, ideas of, as far as teaching is concerned. Uh, we will then move on to look at the internally assessed units and how to mark holistically, uh, with the main focus today being the Pearson set themed assessment, interpreting the theme. Uh, my name is Colin Whitaker and I'm the Senior Standards Verifier for BTEC Public and Protective Services. So as we go through today's session, there will be some terms that, that we might you might see on the slides. And so this slide just gives you an idea of those um, what those terms are and who those people are. Um, it's just there, for, particularly if you are relatively new to BTEC delivery. As ever, because this is a recorded event, please feel free to pause the recording at any point um, to take more notes from the slides or consider some of the information um, that we will be looking at. Uh, I will be referring you to documents. All the documents that I refer to are available on the uh, Pearson website, and in particular, um, the, the Pearson set theme is available on the Uniform Protective Services site. So the new suite, as you can see on the screen at the moment, of um, BTEC Uniform Protective Services was uh, for first delivery in January 2020. Um, but a lot of centres picked this up in September 2020. The, this was brought in to replace the old QCF qualification. Um, and that one, this is the last year really for that qualification because a lot of last registrations for the QCF um, Uniform Public Services qualification at level three was the 31st of August. Um, 2021 so that, that's no longer open for registrations uh, and these are the suite of qualifications that were brought in to replace them as you can see on the screen we've brought it in for the full range of qualifications from certificate all the way up to extended diploma across the suite and at all levels um, we use a mixture of internal and external assessments Okay, so across the whole suite, unit two is the externally assessed unit. So that is um, human behavior and discipline is the uh, externally assessed unit across all qualifications. And then for the two larger sizes for the diploma and the extended diploma, there is a second externally set unit, which is unit six, uh, government policies and the protective services. Um, both of those uh, units are assessed by a formal examination so it's set and marked by Pearson. All of the other units with the exception of unit two and unit six are internally assessed that means that they are um, the assignments are set by you um, and then marked by you and then we will verify those through our standards verification process. So when you're looking at internal assessment um, the infographic on the screen shows you the kind of things that you need to be thinking about. OK, um, you have to develop an in internal um, assessment through an assignment brief. Um, that assignment brief must be internally verified uh, by your IV before it is issued to the learners. Um, the assignment task must cover all the assessment criteria with a learning aim. So you cannot split um, learning aims across different tasks, please. OK, they, they should be incorporated within a task. Um, and likewise, you can't split them across different assignment briefs. Your assignment brief should be written from distinction down, so you should be targeting the distinction criteria with the merits and passes falling out of those. We shouldn't be seeing separate tasks for pass, merit and distinction. Once you've issued your assignment brief to the learners in the same way as all BTEC assess internal assessment now, um, they should be working independently on those tasks and then submit the evidence to you. You then mark that. Um, and uh, in the same way as on the QCF, if the learner has um, not achieved all the criteria, but have met the conditions, which are that they've met the deadline, they've signed an authenticity statement, and the assessor feels that without further guidance, they could achieve further criteria, um, then you can allow one resubmission within 15 working days. 
These assign internal assessments will then be standards verified by Pearson during the standards verification window, which is generally from January through to April. When you're planning your um, internal assessments and your assessment as a whole for the qualification, um, all of that assessment should be planned and your delivery should be planned around your BTEC assessment plan. Um, the infographic on the, the screen shows you the kind of things that you need to be thinking about. So which order are you delivering the units in? Have you checked the structure if you're delivering a qualification, if you are nesting your qualifications, so you do a smaller qualification in year one uh, and then move on to the larger qualification in year two and claim in the middle? Um, then have you made sure that all of the units that you are delivering in year one are valid against that smaller qualification? Because as we will see when we look at the structure, not all units are valid against all levels or all sizes sorry, of the qualification. Think about your assignments and projects. Think about how you're assessing it. Think about using alternative assessment methods where you can, using presentations, role plays, um, using practical assessments if that's possible. Although we've said you can't assess um, learning aims across a different assignment brief, you can incorporate learning aims from more than one unit in an assignment brief if that is appropriate. So if you're doing an activity that allows you to do that, then that's absolutely fine to assess via a project style, um, as long as each of the, the units are mapped across and it's clear that the learning aims are covered within that assignment, then that's absolutely fine. Please think about your resource planning. Have you got the resources available at the appropriate time that you need them in order to do the assessments and delivery of the unit? Uh, and that includes human resources as well. So have you got the subject specialists available to you to deliver the unit and assess the learners at a point that is appropriate in your assessment plan. Timetabling is a big thing for you. Um, think about how many hours you're giving to the different units. And I understand that, the, that it can be a hot topic and that across the centres that I've worked with, there's a, a wide range of um, delivery time that is allocated to the qualification. As an awarding organisation, Pearson don't set what delivery time a centre has to give. We just provide information as far as guided learning hours are concerned. But please think about it. Are you do it delivering um, in a long and thin method so that you're delivering a number of units all the way across the year? Or are you delivering in a more semesterized method? Either of those are absolutely fine, but you just need to think about how you're covering the content and how you're allowing the learners sufficient time to prepare for the external assessment as well. Schemes of work um, are available on the website and more and more are being added. So please look at those. These are not set in stone. We don't say you have to follow the schemes of work. Okay? What we're saying to you is these are suggestions and tips and, and ideas on how you might want to deliver the unit. Um, but we aren't prescriptive on that. And we let, leave that to you to, to work with your students and with your centre and, and contextualise that to, to meet their needs. When you're looking at your assessment plan, please think about workload balance, both your workload balance, but also your learners. It's always a good idea to include the external assessment dates that you're using um, on the internal BTEC assessment plan because it allows you to plan your assessments. The exam dates are published um, and they are available on the BTEC website um, and they are set in stone. They're not movable uh, in the same way as any other exam is not movable. OK, so you have to plan around those. Think about your delivery. Think about are you pausing your internal assessments um, for a few weeks before the external assessment to provide revision opportunities for your learners? And then finally, think about your standards verification window, please. Standards verification dates will be published in October for you. Um, and those windows are, are there so that we can make sure we get all activity done uh, in order to facilitate certification for your learners. Your standards verifier will need to see a full units. They cannot see partial units. So you will have to have full units completed um, ready for the standards verification window. And that takes us back to this idea of timetabling. And if you're delivering all units long and thin, will you have a unit completed in time for your standards verifier to look at? So that is something that you'll need to think about. And your BTEC assessment plan allows you to consider that. 
So on screen now, we have the qualification structure. And as I said before, you can see there that not all units are available at all sizes. In fact, there is only one, and that is the largest size, is the extended diploma that incorporates every single unit on the qualification. Um, and that's because unit 14, principles of managing security threats, is only available at that size. As you can see on here, the two shaded units um, are the external assessments. So behavior and discipline and government and protective services are the two externally assessed units. And then across the different sizes, there are a range of mandatory units with the remainder being optional. And you can choose the appropriate number of units to make up the size of qualification that you are delivering. For those of you that are um, more experienced at delivery of the QCF specification, on the website, you will find a mapping document that maps these units against the specification for, from the old QCF so that you can see where unit content has been placed in the new qualification. There are some of these units that are new to us. So for example, um, sociological perspectives is a new unit to the suite. And the reason we've brought that one in is because a number of our higher education partners identified the fact that public service students have a tendency to go on to social science based degrees at university. And they felt that sociological perspectives would be a useful unit to have in the suite. Likewise, we recognize the fact that a lot of learners move on to um, policing degrees. And so we introduced the criminal investigation procedures and practice to give them a foundation knowledge um, needed for those degrees. As I say, please feel free to pause the slide if you need to, or the presentation if you need to, to make any notes and check your delivery plan against this structure. So unit one is a Pearson set unit. Um, what this means is that every year we will issue a theme with a set of topics that you can choose from. And later on in this presentation, we're going to be focusing on those to look at how you can incorporate those more effectively into your learning. What I can tell you is that this theme and topic will change every year. So please make sure that you have access to the correct theme and topic for the delivery of this unit. It's really important that you use the theme and topic that is issued for the delivery in the, for the year in which you are delivering the unit. So if you have a two year learning aim and you register your learners this year, 2021-22, but you decide you are only delivering and assessing um, unit one, next in the second year so next year then you will have to use next year's theme which will only be issued um, around about may or june of this year you can't use this year's theme it's important that you use the year the theme for the year in which the, that actual unit is being delivered and assessed please it is internally assessed okay but unit one will always be sampled alongside the normal sampling so on our qualification, if, for example, you're delivering an extended certificate, which may only require one unit to be sampled for, by your standards verifier, they will look at unit one plus that one unit. Unit one is set outside of those sampling rules and will always be sampled in addition to the normal sampling sizes. So on screen there, you have um, where the guidance for the current year can be found. You have also got on there previous year's guidance as well. So at the moment, there are two sets on there. So that's last year's and this year's. OK, so that you can access the guidance there. Please remember okay, to think about the relationship between the theme, the topic and the assignment. And that's what we're going to focus on more as we go through this presentation. What you have to do is when you go on to the, the document, um, towards the, the end of it, once it explains the, the whole process of the unit, you'll find the theme that, and the topics. Okay, you have to choose one of the topics. Okay, and that all the three topics relate to the theme, but you have to choose one of the topics, and then you will have to develop an assignment brief around that topic. What you have to do if you choose to, to choose more than one topic. So if you have um, a teaching set or cohort of students um, that, that you've got more than one cohort, you can actually choose two different topics. But whatever the cohort is, so if you've got two groups, then group one has to all use the same topic. You can then use that same topic for group two, 
or you could choose a different topic for group two. But that each teaching group has to have the same topic. Please also remember that there can be no more than two assignment briefs covering all of the learning aims. And it is indicated within the um, unit specification how those learning aims should be split. So learning aims A and B in one assignment and C and D in the further assignment. Under our BTEC assessment rules, because of the fact that, as with any internally assessed unit, what you can't issue the assignment until you've done the teaching and you know that the learner is ready to take the assessment, then we don't advise that you put all of the learning aims into one assignment brief, because what that would mean is that you have to teach the entire topic before you can do any summative assessment. So we're looking today um, and we've based this training on last year's topic. So we're looking at the 2020, 2021 topic here. But the themes and the, the process that I'm going to talk through with you will apply to any year. First things here is you've got to choose a topic which will provide learners with a starting point for their work. Please don't see the topic as an extra assessment criteria because it isn't. The whole point of having the topic is that it is kind of like a focus for your delivery and for your assessment. Okay, so the topic that's been chosen here, okay, um, is looking at the citizenship and the diverse nature of communities and the rights and responsibilities of citizens and those that serve them. As it says on the screen, okay, it, the theme and the topic set the parameters for the assignment brief. And if you like, it should be a thread that runs through what you are actually doing. So if in the, the example that, that we've used here, so for example, we've looked at um, rights and respons uh, responsibilities of citizens and community cohesion, for example, then as you're delivering the unit, you will focus all of your learning back onto how does that help with community cohesion? You'll get your students to focus on the various different parts of the unit with an, a view of how that impacts on community cohesion. As it says there, you should be looking at this as a lens for which the learners can focus their learning. It's not anything additional. The assessment criteria are set in the unit. It's just the focus of the learning that you will be getting the students to do. Please remember that group work is not acceptable for this unit. Okay, You cannot set a group task for the summative assessment. All learner work for the unit must be individual. It's fine to set research tasks as small groups and teaching activities in group work. That's absolutely fine. As long as any evidence that's produced from that is then used by the learner to produce their own piece of work. They cannot work together on this. So some of the key considerations that you need to think about. Firstly, is make it clear what you're expecting the learner to do. Think about what you want them to actually produce as far as the assignment is concerned. Be clear to them. How are they going to focus on the topic in their assessment? On the um, website, there is an example assignment brief that can show you the kind of way that you could weave the topic through the tasks. If you do decide to use that, please, please make sure that you adapt it. It's not acceptable just to use that because that has not been written around these topics or themes. If you are using that, please think about the vocational scenario. It's really important that you use that to be meaningful for your learner. It's, you can use that to really set the focus on the topic. By weaving the topic through in the scenario, it will set the context of the assessment for the learner. When you're writing your assignment brief, be clear what evidence the learner needs to use, or needs to produce, sorry, in order to meet the requirements. So what are you asking them to produce? Make sure you include the learning aims that are targeted by the assignment brief, as well as the assessment criteria as well. Within your task, please use the same operative verbs, okay, that are used in the assessment criteria. It's really important that you don't change those because that could very subtly change the focus of the evidence that you're asking the learner to produce. And then that could then mean that they're not producing evidence that is sufficient or valid to meet the grading criteria. Please refer to the learning aims and assessment criteria. And also on the website, there is an essential information for assessment decisions under guidance. 
underneath the theme and topic, which takes you through what we're expecting to see from a pass, a merit, and a distinction piece of work. You've got to provide your learners with sufficient opportunities to meet the full range of assessment criteria. And so that's where we're looking at the holistic, okay, holistic marking. So mark from distinction down, please, and take a step back and look at the whole of the evidence that the learner has produced and consider whether it meets those distinction descriptors. As with all internally assessed units, okay, you cannot provide specific feedback, uh, assessment feedback, okay, before it's been submitted for assessment. Okay, you should not be taking in a first draft and then a final draft. Okay, it's the same as any other internally assessed unit. You set the deadline and you should only be providing feedback after that deadline. When you are providing feedback, you can't give further guidance as to how to improve the work. So you can't look around and say, you've met pass by doing this. Now to meet a merit, you need to do that. Okay. There shouldn't be giving directive feedback like that on how to improve the evidence to achieve the higher grades. What you should be doing is giving more holistic guidance to the learners. If you want to set some mock tasks by, prior to setting the formal assignment, that's absolutely fine. And so you can use um, previous themes, previous topics, or you can set your own kind of, of theme and topic um, to give a mock assignment brief or a mock task to prepare the learners so you're checking their learning. But you shouldn't be using the actual brief in order to do that. So if we look at um, the 2020-2021 theme and take that into further details, okay? So the theme is here, okay? In last year, the theme was um, looking at um, community cohesion and the protective services. So the theme looked at um, the way the changes to traditional protective service delivery in order to ensure community cohesion is maintained. And we put some bullet points in there for you to, of things that you might want to think about so that you can incorporate some of these bullet points into your teaching when you're actually delivering the unit. So that set the theme. That tells you the kind of things that we're looking for. And all of that information links back to the unit content. So once you've understood the theme, that gives you, as I say, it gives you a way of focusing your delivery so that you can bring some of these bullet points in throughout the unit when you're actually delivering the unit. You then choose one of the three topics. The three topics here um, are strategies in place to support uniform protective service workers to, again, linking back to improve community cohesion. If if you think it's more appropriate for the context in which you're delivering or for the learners that you're delivering to, you could choose topic two instead. So the role of local, national and international organisations in supporting and developing community cohesion. Or final choice would be challenges facing uniform protective services um, to ensure community cohesion if you've got a, an area of large demographic change. So each of them are focused on the same part. You know, they're all focused around the theme, but they're taking that theme and applying it in a subtly different way. One, looking at strategies to support. One, looking at roles of, of organizations. And one, looking at the challenges of dem demographic change. So you can choose which one of those that you think your learners would be able to respond to more effectively. And then within your task, you will bring those, the, that, those topics through the task. So you would think about setting tasks that place the learner in a position where they have to consider how, so if you chose topic one, strategies. So what strategies do they use to make sure that they've got, the, 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 um, that the learning is, is assessed in light of community cohesion and the strategies that they use to, to improve that? So then if you're looking at um, ensuring a quality of service delivery by the Uniform Protective Services, then you might want to then look at um, how the, they make sure that everybody in all of the community and all sections of the community um, are able to access service delivery and how they use strategies to make sure that all members of the community feel 
able to access their service and so how that then in itself improves community cohesion. All of these are just suggested ideas of how you could actually um, bring your topic and weave your topic through into your assessment. There are examples and so if you've accessed um, this year, year in October or September 2021, the customer support materials that have been produced for this qualification focus around unit one. And within those customer support materials, you've got examples of how you could focus last year's theme. So the theme I've been using for this training into an assignment. And then we've also put on examples of learner work and how the learner has responded to that assignment and incorporated the themes throughout it. So there are examples on this year's customer support materials used for standardization of how you can incorporate the theme and the topic and then how that fil filters its way through to the learner evidence. So I, you know, all lead IVs have access to that. And it's really important that as a team, you use those standardization materials to see the standard that we're expecting. But then you can use that to further refer back to when you're particularly delivering unit one. We do have a lot of support available for you um, when you're actually planning and teaching this qualification and also when you're delivering unit one. As I've said, there are schemes of work online and there are example assignment briefs. For all the other internal assessed units, um, there will be authorised assignment briefs. We have put the majority of the units are on the website at the moment um, and the final units that haven't got them there, they will be coming up in the near future. Schemes of work and mapping documents are there as well as an example delivery plan as well. This is a recorded um, event for you to think about the, the qualification and with a particular focus on unit one. But there are also other getting ready to teach events with a particular focus on the external assessed units as well that you can access. As I say, there is assessment tracking, tracking and mapping documents and my BTEC is available to you as well um, to help you with the delivery of the qualification. I've already mentioned the authorised assignment briefs and the fact that for unit one, they are example assignment briefs, not authorised assignment briefs. But please remember that with unit one, the same as any other unit, that once you have written your assignment brief, you can submit that through the assignment checking service that is available um, through the Pearson website so that you can get some feedback on the assignment to make sure that it's going along the right lines. So please feel free um, to use the uh, example, uh, sorry, the assignment checking service to check your assignment once you've written it. Once you get your standards verifier allocated to you, please make sure that you use them as a resource as well. They're there to support you um, and they're there to, to provide some advice and guidance if you feel that you need it. So please make sure you use that once they've been in touch. I mentioned my BTEC. Um, this is a, a, a service that is available to all BTEC centres. You will require an Edexcel online account, which your centre can actually um, set you up with. And then once you've got that, you've got access to My BTEC. My BTEC is a, a platform that allows you to put your assignment briefs on there. Your IV documentation can go through that. It's an easy way to share, way to share that documentation um, with your SV as well. You can provide them access to it so they can see that. You can track your assessment uh, and delivery as well through there. Um, it's a great resource for you to help you with the actual planning and delivery of the qualification uh, and as I've said already it's available free to all BTEC centres okay um, it's quals.pearson.com forward slash my BTEC is the website okay so I recommend that one to you hopefully you found this training event useful um, it is only a brief event for you just to focus on unit one and should you have any further questions please make sure that you put them through the support portal um, which again is available on the Pearson website, or give us a ring on the telephone number that is available to you um, on the screen there, and we will do our best to make sure that we provide the support. Please feel free to access any further events that are coming up where we might be able to ask any questions, and hopefully you'll find this helpful to help you understand how to incorporate the theme and topic into your assignments. <laughs>